गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन गुड मॉर्निंग मैम गुड मॉर्निंग मैम नेक्स्ट पॉइंट ऑफ दिस चैप्टर इज स्टेग्नोग्राफी हियर इन दिस डायग्राम ऑल्सो यू विल कम टू नो दैट वन पिक्चर इज देयर इमेज इज देयर इफ यू फाइंड दिस इमेज यू विल नॉट अंडरस्टैंड एनीथिंग बट समथिंग इज हिडन इनसाइड दिस इमेज मैसेज इज हिडन इनसाइड दिस इमेज but as a normal user if you find this you will find only check check boxes are there or here dots are there but actually hidden message is there secret message is there so that is stenography here stenography is a method of concealing secret data within a non secret file or a message in order to prevent detection the secret data is then extracted as its destination means normal user will not understand that it is a secret message inside this image he will find that is a normal image but only source and destination knows about that image what is the use of that image they know how to hide this data and uh, destination person will know how to extract that data so that is the stenography it is a method of concealing secret data within a non secret file or message stenography can be used in conjunction with encryption to further conceal or safeguard data so here it here we can use this stenography with encryption to further conceal or safeguard data means again we are going to give encryption for that data not only we are keeping our data in plain text under that image we are going to encrypt that data over there to give more protection stenography can be used to hide almost any sort of digital content including text images video and audio the data to be concealed can be hidden inside almost any type of digital content so here under this technography we can hide any sort of data that is in digital form such as text image video audio so this is the basic of technography technography goes a step further than cryptography by concealing an encrypted message such that no one knows it exists so here we are going to conceal encrypted message and if we have already seen the image how that image looks like it is a normal image under that image we are going to conceal encrypted data or encrypted message so it is going further cryptography so because of this no one knows the existence of message anyone scanning your data should in theory have no no idea that is encrypted because we have written some code only random code will be there it will be anything nobody think about that it is a message because that is encrypted they will use some symbols also for encryption the content to be hidden via stenography also known as a hidden text is frequently encrypted before being inserted into the seemingly innocuous cover text file or data stream so before we are we have to add that message under uh, using stenography we are encrypt that message and keeping that data under any image normal image if the hidden text is not encrypted it is usually proce processed in some way to make it more difficult to figure out what is what is about data hiding information hiding and digital watermarking are some of the other names for the same thing for stenography these are the other things data hiding information hiding and digital watermark difference between stenography and cryptography cryptography is the science of hiding information while stenography is the art of writing hidden message so that the only sender and receiver are aware about the existence of that message we have seen this diagram let comers you can also see such type of images will be there 
if you find these images you will not get anything if you if you, you, you will find any normal images there but under this image secret message is stored and that is also in encrypted form that is called as a steganography here in cryptography we are just hiding information it is a science to hide information but in steganography there is art how to hide that information we are using uh, this information to hide under image under normal image so this is the art how we can hide the image so only sender and receiver knows about that existence of that message that is the first difference between cryptography and steganography then only the sender and recipient are aware of the message existence in steganography whereas the presence of the encrypted message is visible to the rest of the world in cryptography just a minute so second second difference is only the sender and recipient are aware of the message existent in steganography here we are talking about steganography who knows about the existence of that message only sender and recipient but in the cryptography presence of encrypted message is visible to the rest of the world because you will come to know that the some message is there and that is encrypted but here random image is there because of that image you will not means other person except the sender and recipient other person will not think about that some hidden messages behind this image so that is the difference one more difference between steganography and cryptography Na next message uh, difference cryptographic method attempt to safeguard a message content whereas steganography employs method that conceal both message and its content better security can be achieved by combining steganography and cryptography so this is about steganography basic theory of steganography and here is the image and this is a secret message you can find out various messages or images regarding this steganography yes in this i there is some message only sender and receiver will come to know the other other thing will think that it is a normal picture here in this picture also some message is hidden so various examples are given you can show any image here also you can check this is the message which is in encrypted form original and steganography so these are the some example of steganography only you will find the picture is there but behind that picture there is a encryption encrypted message and only sender and receiver will come to know that understood this technography yes yes ma'am now next point is dos and ddos attacks dos mean denial of service denial of service attack floods a server with traffic denial of service we are denying the giving service to other person we are using one application but some at one attack is there that is dos attack because of that attacks that application is not able to give service because of floods a server with traffic unwanted traffic is there on this server because of this traffic legal user who is authenticate authenticate user that is not able to use the application properly so denial of service attack floods a server with traffic effectively shutting down a website or resources a distributed denial of service second ddos a distributed denial of service attack is a dos attack that is denial of service attack 
that flirts a targeted resource with several computers using various computers they are going to target particular attack or particular victim so here they are using several computers in this ddos attack both type of attack attempts to overload a server both are using for overload a server or online application in order to disrupt the services understood this dos and ddos definition of dos and ddos both are used to overload a server to disrupt their services yes yes ma'am got it when a server receives more transmission control protocol or user datagram protocol tcp udp packets than it can handle what is it capacity some some capacity will be there for that server to receive messages and he is getting or receiving request for more than that what is its capacity he is re receiving the packets more than that more than its capacity that time it may crash data may become damaged and resources may be misdirected or even exhausted they will exhaust by fulfilling the coming request causing the system to become paralyzed so because of this case what it can handle how much how much request that particular server can handle this dos attack or ddos attack sending more than that request continuously sending the request and because of that reason it may crash data may become damaged and resources may be misdirected or even exhausted causing the system to become paralyzed difference between dos and ddos the key difference between dos and ddos is that the former is a system on system attack former means this dos one is the system on system attack one system will be there that is going to attack on particular system while the latter is this one latter means ddos latter is multi system attack multiple system we are using to attack on victims here we are using in this attack we are using multiple system to target someone and here in the dos attack we are using single system to target someone however there are certain distinctions affecting their nature or detection so certain distinction distinction will be there that going to affect their nature and detection such as ease of detection or mitigation because a dos originates from a single site a single machine will be there single site will be there it is easy to identify and terminate the connection you know that from this ip address i am getting continuous request you can identify that computer you can terminate that connection in fact an effective firewall can do this this is about dos a ddos attack on the other hand originate from several far away places concealing its source because they are using botnet they have already infected various computers and using that computers they are attacking your computer so you are not aware about who is the attacker that person don't know about by using his pcs attack is going on some other pc so that person don't know so here is identification of source from using that means who is the attacker that is not going to identify here easily because various machines are used to target a victim and that machines are also already victim of that particular person so using that computer he is targeting your computer so who will get uh, if any uh, anything happen there and they are trying to identify the source from which computer they are getting request that the person is actually innocent person 
somebody else is controlling that computer and sending request to you so here it is difficult to identify the criminal and in the dos attack because of single pc is there single system is there it is easy to identify and we can terminate the request and they said that effective firewall can do this so this is the first difference between dos and ddos understood this yes ma'am next attack speed now you you come to know that what is the speed of attack if here we are using single pc in here we are using multiple pcs on the basis of that attack speed is decided a ddos attack can be deployed significantly faster than dos attack that originates from single place this dos attacks originates from single place one pc is going to continuously request to other pc but here number of pcs are available so using that that attack can be a can be spread faster than dos attack the increased assault speed makes detection more difficult resulting in addition damage to put damage or potentially a distress result disastrous result so this is second difference that is attack speed on the basis of this only you can identify that in dos attack we are using single pc to attack someone and here we are using multiple pc so speed of this ddos attack is more than dos next is traffic volume this also will give you idea about this difference that is for only one pc is there using that pc we are sending request so it will decide the how how much speed uh, how much speed of that pc on the basis of that traffic volume is decided but in ddos we are using various pcs continuous traffic is sending using different pcs so volume of traffic is more in ddos because a ddos assault uses numerous remote machines zombie or bots it may send significantly bigger volume of traffic from multiple locations at the same time so that is not possible in dos dos here we are using only single pc so comparison is between ddos and dos so ddos sending more traffic than dos so because of this continuous request overloading a server server quickly and avoiding detection because it's a zombie or bot so these two differences are there in ddos and dos attack understood this attack speed and traffic volume yes ma'am now next method of execution ddos attack uses command and control c and c server to coordinate many host infected with malware we have seen this part in botnets how that botnet is working so command and control is there to coordinate many host infected with malware that is bots resulting in a botnet a dos attack on the other hand usually employs a script or tools to carry on the stack on the attack out carry out the attack from a single machine so here they are using script or tool to attack on other machine using single machine only and here they are infecting pcs and that pcs are used to attack on other pc so method of execution is different in this two next so stressing here also you will come to know that ddos is not able to trace because they are using some uh, somebody else pc because botnet is used somebody else pc they have used in ddos so finding the real origin is far more difficult than tracing the origin of dos attack understood these two difference method of execution and sources source tracing yes yes ma'am now we will see types of dos and ddos attack dos and ddos attack come in a variety of form and they can be utilized for a variety of purpose it could make a company to lose business cripple a competitor divert attention away from other attacks 
or simply cause trouble or make a statement why these attack are going to conduct if you want particular company to lose business means continuously you are sending request to that company's website and that company website is unavailable for authenticate user so that company will lose business triple a competitor divert attention away from other attacks or simply to cause trouble or make a statement so these are the reason we are conducting these attack dos and ddos attack the following are some some of the most prevalent form that such attack take first is tear drop attack types of dos and ddos attack in this first is tear drop attack a tear drop attack is a denial of service attack that send a network a large number of ip data fragments it is a dos attack here they are sending large number of ip data fragments to particular victim the network is unable to recombine the fragments back into their original packets large number of inter ip data fragments are sending and that particular network is unable to recombine that means which is first packet this which is second which is third they are unable to recombine that fragments back into their original packet because of large number of ip fragments so for example the attacker may break down very large data packets into many fragments for reassembling by the targeting system normally this is the working how we can send packets to another from source to destination we are not sending single complete message into one pack one fragment we are breaking that fragment and sending that fragment or packets using various ways to the destination and at destination they try to assemble that again reassemble that again all things should be there because reference is given in the packets all things should be there if anything is missing then that message is not going to send to the receiver so here they are sending large number of that much packets so it is not able to reassemble that by the targeted system so this is a dos attack the attacker on the other hand modifies how the packet is deconstructed to confuse the targeted system the attacker had modified the packets sequence so receiver cannot rearrange it or reassemble it rendering it unable to reassemble the fragments into the original packet and if that package are not reassemble so it is incomplete that package packet is not going to send to the actual receiver so this is the tear drop attack next is flooding attack everywhere you will find such a type of attack only continuous messages are going to send and receiver is confused what to get every in every type you will get this type of message only here flooding attack a flooding attack is a denial of service attack in which a server receives a repeated connection request continuous connection request are there and for this also limit of connection pool is there how many connection can be established there is a limit and because of this continuous request for the connection and but does not react to complete the handshake means handshake uh, till we are not going to handshake we cannot connect with the actual server only sending request and waiting only sending request and waiting not completing that request means server is busy to request you back for the connection so here flooding attack is a denial of service attack in which a server receives a repeated connection request but does not react to complete the handshake the attacker may send numerous requests to connect as a client now i am a client i am an attacker i will send numerous requests to server but when the server tries to communicate back to verify the connection the attacker refuses to answer 
After repeated attempts, the server gets so overburdened with pending requests that legitimate clients are unable to connect, and server becomes busy or even fails. Understood? Here, attacker sending continuous requests to the server, and when server tries to connect with the client, that time client is not responding, and he is. that server is getting continuous such type of request and because of that he is uh, server is overburden with the pending request and actual user of that server is not able to use the services that's it that's why it is called as a denial of service attack so this is the second type of attack flooding attack third ip fragmentation attack ip fragmentation is a source of uh, sort of dos attack that sends out truncated network packets that the recipient network can't reassemble same type like first one recipient can't reassemble the packets the network becomes clogged with a large unassembled packets that consume all of the network resources that packets are already available in the network and which are not useful that is a part that the attacker has done that part to consume the network resources and your receiver is not able to reassemble that packets because attacker has changed that message how to reassemble the packets because of that the recipient is not able to reassemble it so that is a ip fragmentation attack next volumetric attack a volumetric attack is a type of ddos attack on the basis of this word also you you will come to know that it comes under which type ddos volume volume based attack is this a volumetric attack is a type of ddos attack focuses on bandwidth resources for example attacker might employ a botnet to flood a network with internet control message protocol that echoes requests continuously sending request by using bots causing a network to overload as a result services slow down or perhaps stop entirely so here this attack is a comes under ddos attack volumetric attack next is protocol attack a protocol attack is a sort of ddos attack that exploits flaws in the osi osi models layer 3 and 4 some weaknesses are there in osi models layer 3.4 and advantage of that weaknesses are taken by ddos attack that comes under protocol attack they are taking weakness of this protocol as a advantage and continue to send attacks continue to send messages to the victim the attacker may for example take advantage of tcp connection sequence by issuing request but failing to get responses or responding with another request from the fake source ip address unanswered queries deplete the network resources causing it to become unavailable final result is same sending continuous request and not getting response so this is the protocol attack here they are taking advantage of flaws in the osi model layer 3.4 3 and 4 so this is the type of ddos attack next application based attack a ddos attack that targets layer 4 7 here they are targeting layer 7 that is application of the osi model is known as application based attack a slow loris attack for example occurs when an attacker makes partial hypertext transfer protocol request not a complete partial http request but does not finish them here also same thing request they are sending request but does not finishing them 
http headers are sent on a regular basis for each request causing network resources to be become congested the attacker will keep attacking until the server is unable to make any new connection there is a limit for connection here the attacker is continuously sending a request to the server till what time till server is unable to make any new connection means authenticate user is not able to use server continuously send attack on the server but it delivers partial packets rather than faulty one and utilizes little to no bandwidth this form of attack is difficult to detect so this is the application based attack it targets layer 7 of osi module these are the types of dos some types of dos and ddos attack peer drop attack flooding attack ip fragmentation attack volumetric attack protocol attack application based attack understood this types of dos and ddos attack yes yes ma'am now how to defend against dos and ddos attack so they they have given some best practices for dos and ddos attack protection first continuously monitor your network this is important for detecting normal traffic pattern as well as early detection and mitigation so here continuously monitor the network to check the traffic pattern whether it is normal or not then run test to replicate dos attack this will help in risk assessment exposing weaknesses and cyber security training for staff here we have to run the test to replicate dos attack so for risk assessment for the future uh, of your organization risk assessment should be there better future of your organization what could be the risk and we have to do assessment if this is happen with you or this attack is uh, happen on you on your system then what what could be the risk for your organization that is the risk assessment what could be the loss we have to find out that loss and we have to be means prepare for that loss also so you are going to expose your weaknesses trying using this test you are doing this test on your server try to expose the weaknesses and what type of uh, counter measures we have to give for our organization that will be decided on this what type of loss is this whether it is big loss or small small loss will be there on the basis of that the organization is going to manage your security as well as this we have to train the staff organization has to train the staff then make a safety strategy for this make a checklist assemble a response team establish response parameters and deploy security so these are the some best practices for dos and ddos protection next identify identify key systems and regular traffic pattern that also we have seen in the first point we have to check the normal traffic pattern which are the key systems that you have to identify first and what is the regular traffic for that system that you should know the former help in protection planning while the latter help in early danger detection so identify key system means it will help you to protect for uh, protection planning these are the uh, important key systems for of your organization so you will give more protection for these systems and latter help in early danger detection why this, we are doing this if there is a danger and you will come to know that because of regularly you are monitoring traffic pattern on the basis of that traffic pattern you will come to know that it is normal or abnormal if abnormal you will be you are going to detect it earlier 
so you will try to protect your system if you know that some danger is going to come at your side you will try to protect it so this is also best practice Pro prevention is better than cure that is here then extra bandwidth may not be able to stop the attack but it will help the network in dealing with traffic spikes and reduce the impact of any attack so here we are giving extra bandwidth it will not stop the attack but it will help the network in dealing with traffic spikes and reduce the impact of any attack so these are the some best practices of dos and ddos protection now next ddos attacks are developing and getting more complex and powerful requiring solutions that employ comprehensive strategies such as advanced reporting tools and analytics to simultaneously monitor a large number of threat factor multi layer ddos protection such as qwerty ddos is required to protect an organization against known attacks so this qwerty ddos is required to protect an organization against known attacks and to prepare for potential zero day attack what is zero day attack anyone zero day attack yes and new to yourself fast what is zero day attack students zero day attack do you know about this zero day attack yes and mute students are you getting me yes ma'am yes ma'am you don't know about zero day attack yes ma'am yes if some attack is there on your system and first time that attack is going to happen on your system and you don't you not only you whole world don't know about that attack first time that attack is going to happen on your system for example corona when corona came first time we don't have anything we don't have any vaccination for vaccination it took one and half year hmm it took complete one and half year to came solution for that particular attack corona attack such a type of attack is called as a zero day attack there is no solution for that attack at that moment hmm if today that attack is happen on your system at that time you don't have any solution then what is that attack you will do analysis of that attack and on the basis of that analysis you will find the solution that is next day but what about today what about now at this time you have nothing that is called as a zero day attack clear yes ma'am wait a minute sorry for disturbance so we we were talking about zero day attack zero day attack means there is one attack for that attack there is no solution at that particular moment 
after some time after some days you will get the solution the 14th ddos attack mitigation appliance is included in 40 ddos attack 40 ddos and it provides continuous threat evaluation and security protection for layer 3 4 and 7 so what are the weaknesses of this layer that are protected by using this 40 ddos this is the application using this we can protect that type of attack which can be conducted using that weaknesses layer 3 4 and 7 so here ddos and ddos attack point is over is there any doubt in this yes we have seen what is ddos and ddos after that first we have seen the definition part then difference between ddos and ddos for ddos we are using single pc single machine to attack for ddos we are using multiple machines to attack on someone then we have seen types of ddos and ddos attacks tear drop flooding ip fragmentation volumetric protocol application based attack so after that we have seen best practices to protect from this type of attack then now next point is sql injection i will check how many slides are there for this okay we will finish this sql injection sql injection is a code injection approach for attacking data driven system that involves inserting malicious sql statement into an entry field for execution for example to dump the database content to the attacker so here they are injecting sql query malicious sql statement into your application to conduct such type of attack sql injection attack it's a type of attack that takes advantage of your web applications incorrect coding if something is wrong there in your application this type of attack can take advantage of that vulnerability mostly such applications are going to uh, happen on the web applications you will come to know that sql injection on the web applications so what are the vulnerabilities of your application how you have protected your application how you have code your application for login id and password also there is a requirement of validation if proper validations are not there sql injection attack can be happen on that page so it is a type of attack that take advantage of your web applications incorrect coding if you if you check uh, for uh, sql injection attack you can check user id and password you can directly write 11 if no problem means that vulner vulnerability is there into that application you can directly log in into that application write 11 instead of username and password you will write 11 that is the sql injection attack you will write one in a username and one in the password directly you can log into the application that is the sql injection various websites are given for the practice you can use that website and type one one over there directly you are going to log in so that is the vulnerability of application you have to as a developer you have to think about sql injection vulnerabilities it means what are what are the web application vulnerabilities using that sql injection attack can be performed so while developing web application you have to think about this also so it's type of attack that take advantage of your web applications incorrect coding to allow hacker to inject sql instructions into login form just now i told that you can directly write one one enter into the application for example to obtain access to the data stored into your database so they are injecting sql instruction to obtain access to data to store into your database 
what can an attacker do using this what can an attacker do bypassing logins using sql injection attacker can bypass the login acquiring username and password gaining access to confidential data that is a recognizance then adding new data or altering contents of website already they have got the access so they can add new data or already or already there is a data that they can alter it insert update command of sql then shutting down the mysql server so attacker can do all these things using sql injection example sql injection vulnerabilities attacks and tactics can appear in variety of contexts following are some example retrieving concealed data retrieving concealed data you can change an sql query to return more results subverting application logic you can alter a query to interfere with the program's logic so these are the example of sql injection you will change the sql query that using that you can return more result you will get the more data of database or you can alter the query to interfere with the program's logic so these are the some example of sql injection union attack is there you can use union attack to retrieve data from many database tables union means we are going to combine the result of more than one table so that is also attack under sql injection get the more than one tables data using union attack examining the database it allows you to extract information about the database version and structure once this attack is done you are able to extract information what type of information what is the database version what is the structure of your data what type of data it is going to store so using this they are able to prepare for the next type of attack what type of attack can be performed on this particular system is your database is vulnerable or not which version is they are using what is the vulnerability of that version they will come to know that blind sql injection here attacker is going to perform attack but he will not get the result of that attack it is blind continuously he is doing this type of attack but he is not getting what is actual result of that attack using sub variation on the web page he will come to know that yes this type of attack is done he will page is going means it is showing some other things in front of you means that attack is done but actual result he is not getting only using behavior of your application will tell that yes my attack is successful if i am using blind sql injection the result of query you control are not return in the application sensor the behavior will change on that behavior you will come to know that yes successful attack is there that is a blind sql injection sql injection attack steps first step is finding vulnerable website using a google doc list find vulnerable websites vulnerable means which website you can hack such as login pages search pages feedback pages and so on so here google doc list is there using that doc list you can find out the vulnerable pages then by inspecting the source code of the website attacker hunt for pages that exhibit html commands such as post and get using source code of website also we can find the vulnerable website if you are getting get post and get and post method of html command means that website is vulnerable the first step of sql injection attack is finding vulnerable websites which are weak which can be attack attacker can use it to attack step 2 checking the source code of any website 
so here the attacker examines the html source code and look for the form tag in the previous one we are going to use the post and get method here attacker is looking for form tag also examines possible parameters that can be used to detect security flaws possible here also get and post method can be used because that comes under this form tag only so source code is going to verify here for the vulnerabilities step 3 checks user input to accept the login and password the attacker enters single quote ha huh? this is also one thing huh? use single quote as a username and password you can directly enter into the system so attacker enters a single quote in the text box provided on the web page check the user input variable is clean or intercepted literally by the server so while at the time of validation also you are going to check this thing single quote is not allowed i don't know whether you have used our system or not previously when this uh, uh, before vriddhi we were using our local management system initially that is developed by the some developers and they have kept this thing open whenever there is a single quote in anywhere in the address also if there is a single quote apostrophe we are using we can use in the address but whenever you are using that apostrophe automatically system or system was crashing so they have not taken care of this single quote whenever we are going to enter anything we have to remove that single quote and then system was accepting the inputs so this is the part of developer who will take care about this so attacker enters the single quote in the text box provided on the web page for login id and password check the user input variable is clean or intercepted literally by the server if the page stage stays on the same page or display page not found or other web page it is not vulnerable if you are going to enter this single quote on the in the login and password text box and your page is on the same page after entering this data means your page is not vulnerable you can check your website vulnerability using this also or it will show message page not found means you have given proper validation for your web page second if the display if it displays any problem related with the sql query means uh, code is there sql code is there if you are entering a single code in user id and password and you are getting some sql code and here is the problem then it is a susceptible or vulnerable means this web page can be hacked if it is giving some code this web page can be hacked so this is the step number 3 that check user input step number 4 attackers uses sql commands now attacker knows there yes, this is a weak page you can we can attack on this page now attacker uses sql command sql statements such as select and insert are used by the attacker to get data from databases and add information to the database now next is blind sql injection so these are the steps how sql injection attack can be conducted finding vulnerable website checking the source code of the any website check user input what type of input he is inserting attacks use attackers uses sql command after getting all the details from the previous three steps attacker can use sql command to perform attack so he can get the information as well as alter the information from that table now blind sql injection i have already told about this attacker will conduct attack but he will not any get any type of result but on the basis of behavior of that website he will come to know that attack is successful or not when a web pay, web application is vulnerable to an sql injection but the consequences of the injection are not visible means you are not getting the result 
blind injection is blind blind SQL injection is utilized there. Attack is there, but you are not getting the result. It means blind SQL injection is utilized. The vulnerable page may not display data, but it will display differently depending on the result of a logical statement injected into the valid SQL statement that page execute. On which page you have conducted that attack? What is the logical statement or what is the SQL statement of that page? You are changing that statement. You are changing that statement using blind SQL injection. So it will not display anything, but it will behave differently. And because of that behavior, you will think that yes, blind SQL injection is utilized there. Once the location of the vulnerability and the target information has been discovered, there are various tools that can automate this attack. So here you, you come to know about the vulnerability of that page and who is the target and what is the information of that target. You come to know, you, you got all that information, then you can think about various tools that can be used to attack on these systems or web pages. This is the blind SQL injection. How to prevent SQL injection attack? For input validation, all single quotation should be replaced with the two single quotes. This is the part of developer. All single quotations should be replaced with two single quote. Clean up the input by removing characters like colon. Sorry, uh, single. Uh, what to say this? <laughs> Completion of statement. Then double dash, select, and so on. Okay, so you have to check up the input by removing character this character we have to remove these characters when accepting a query string value numeric value should be checked numeric value we have to check while accepting the query string value and make all text boxes and form field as brief as possible only that information you have to get from the user now you can check for address also they are giving separate text boxes huh? for city separate text box for state separate text box will be there hmm? for all the address thing they are giving separate text boxes so that will uh, because of that only specific text you are entering into that input box so that is the input validation one minute Modify error reports. SQL fault should not be visible to the public. If it is visible to the public, then attack can be possible there. So try to invisible this type of fault publicly. Then other preventions are there for SQL Server 2000. Never utilize the default system accounts. Never utilize the default system accounts. For example, initially when there is installation of this, they will give some user ID and password. That is default. After that, after installation, you have to change that. Don't use admin admin. Or for this Scott Tiger for Oracle. That is default one. Don't use that. Change it when after installation. Isolate the database server and the web server on separate computers. This web server and database server should not be on single computer. It should be on separate computer. User created functions and extended store procedures should be migrated to a separate server. Now, user is working on this SQL server. Whatever functions and store procedure he has created, that has to be separately stored on different server. 
it should not be on your web server and your main database server there should be separate server for user to store his information so this type of prevention we have to take if it is related with sql injection so thank you here is the end of this chapter so today we have seen sql injection dos and ddos and steganography is there any doubt in today's point no ma'am okay. okay then we will stop here